Things You Probably Didn't Know. The creator of the Friday the 13th series did a teen sex comedy. Spring Break's a 1982 comedy film from director Sean S. Cunningham. It's Spring Break in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. If you see this guy, run! This girl looks like one of those looping gifts from a porn site. Wait a minute. Lovin' with a lot of dead ladies? This whole place just reeks of Aquanet Brute and Copper Tone. This is Nelson and Adam, two college kids enjoying spring break for the first time. Nelson, wherever you look. Mall hair. This guy loves his job. For some reason, it was a requirement that all 80s movies had someone in a gorilla costume. Nelson and Adam stop at the Breeze and Seas Motel. I know a few people now that should be wearing this shirt. This guy's standing in front of a door that should be labeled Regret. The guys sign in with Jerry, the owner of the motel. Adam can't get over the amount of random butts. They're everywhere! Ish, the bellman, takes them to their room. The room is kind of messy, but they should just be happy they got a place at all on spring break. Especially one right next to the beach. I have a feeling Ish is going to be the extra comic relief. Well, at least it's not Mitch and Arnie. Adam has an intense day planned. I'm going to go down to the pool, get a beer, and a hard on. Nelson's nervous. His stepfather's running for office, and he left to go to spring break instead of helping out with his campaign. Just then, Stu and O.T. arrive. O.T. is the obligatory dumbbell with a heart of gold, and Stu is the, um, smart one. In Florida, if you chug a random guy's 40 during spring break, he has to give you another one. It's the law. Oh my god, it's Mr. Rufus. <gasps> this is Eddie. He's trying to shut down the motel so he can buy it and sell it. Stu and O.T. get their reservations, but due to a mix-up, they're in the same room as Nelson and Adam. Since every room in town's booked, the guys ask to share because they have nowhere else to go. O.T. just likes to walk around with potted plants. It's kind of his thing. Look at that hair helmet. Oh no, Stu, don't! <laughs> Over in a yacht, Nelson's parents are campaigning. Hats! We need more hats to win this thing! Ernest then says the one thing you should never say in a movie. Nothing can go wrong. Not one thing. Yes. It's something going wrong. He gets the phone to find out Nelson skipped out on the campaign. He's supposed to be organizing the canvassers, putting out the mailing list, doing at least six other things. Didn't I always say Nelson was irresponsible? If he knew he was irresponsible, why did he entrust him with so much of the campaign? Meanwhile, Adam and Nelson are enjoying a belly flop contest. You did a belly flop! Yay! Beer! Have more beer! O.T. joins the contest. Apparently, O.T. stands for Out There Tony. Shouldn't that be O.T.T.? Whatever, at least he's not wearing a banana hammock. I don't think this guy's acting. Nelson accidentally spills his beer onto Angry Biker Guy. I'm thinking FTW in the 80s didn't mean for the win. O.T. saves the duo from a beating. I'm starting to think this was sponsored by Miller. How is this a beer chugging contest? The guy's just spitting most of it out. See? OT is gentlemanly chugging it. So it's down to the finals between Crazy Gut Guy and OT. This lady wishes she picked another place to sit. OT completely one-ups him by climbing up a palm tree for his belly flop. This seems like something you'd see on the Darwin Awards. All the beer in the world isn't going to take away that sting. With the belly flop champion in hand, it's time for more drinking! Now that they're all good and blitz, they won't remember how they all shared a urinal. They go into a photo booth to make video game journalist face. Nope, not sponsored by Miller. Cunningham's, eh? The guys stop to get gas and some girls pick up Stu and OT. This leaves Nelson and Adam with the car, so they drive it around acting like dorks. What to do, what to do? Should they go to Cunningham's? The pizza place? How about the best buns contest? Get your mind out of the gutter. It's this kind of buns. After hours of driving around, the guys go back to the motel room to reflect on their evening of driving around. Just then, Stu, O.T., and the girls come in the room. He really just carries around plants, doesn't he? Stu and O.T. need use of the beds for obvious reasons. This isn't awkward at all. The girls pair off with the guys while Adam and Nelson are dumbfounded. All right, now it's smack dab into the middle of Creepy Town. The guys finally go to hide out in the bathroom while they reenact Caligula in the other room. The next day, tidy whiteys abound! No teen sex comedy is complete without fart humor. Adam and Nelson tell the guys they can keep sharing the room. Ernest sees Nelson in the paper embarrassing him, so they decide to go to Florida to get him. I still can't believe guys wore belly shirts. The guys head to the local dealer to get some weed. 
Since Nelson has all the money, they send him in. Oh, good! They didn't go with the horrendous stereotype. No, 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 please, no. <laughs> the guy sells him pot, a radio, and a bunch of other stuff he didn't need. Jones using one of the outdoor showers, and OT is dumbfounded. Did I get all the sand off my butt? Homing beacons activated! This begins phase one of the mating ritual between OT and Joan. I can't tell if he's that smooth or that stupid. I guess it's a little of both. Beach acting montage! Beach pizza. I fully support this. Who dipped these ladies in Vaseline? The gorilla's back. Hey Nelson, it's not the lack of muscles, it's the glasses and the cowboy hat. Nelson sees a girl who noticed him earlier. Eddie meets Ernest at the docks. Ernest tells Eddie to find Nelson. That night they go to, not surprisingly, a bar. Okay, ice cold delicious Miller High Life coming up. The band Hot Date gets on stage and is fronted by Joan, the girl from the beach. I have a feeling their songs are going to be euphemisms for sex. Yep. OT is once again being reeled in. Uh, ma'am, this stage is big enough for those improv high kicks. She kicks away. The guys are walking to the docks when Nelson sees his stepdad's boat. Run back to the motel, Nelson! Run as fast as you can! The guys find him and Nelson tells them about his stepdad. They come up with a foolproof plan to get the evening back on track. Drink! The next day, massive hangover. They sleep it off by the pool. That can't be comfortable. After they wake up, more beer! OT has amassed himself a small greenhouse. That night they're going to a classy joint, so OT puts on a tie. They head to the button to watch some foxy boxing. Jerky biker guy is hitting on Jones, so OT knocks him out. After the boxing match, they move on to the age-old competition, known as the Wet T-Shirt Contest. Adam's evening just improved. I'm curious, in today's college climate, does this still go on? Nelson finally gets to talk to the girl he keeps seeing. They bond over a nice game of Galaga. Temperamental machine. Ah. Too much thruster. Yeah. Too much thruster? I see move and fire. Where exactly is this elusive thrust button? Use your drone shield more. Drone shield? Ah, video games and movies. To make everything fair and balanced, they have a wet he-shirt contest. Stu's enjoying the spotlight and no! The next event is the banana eating contest. Well, this is good to see. Kids don't realize just how important it is to get enough potassium in your diet. Especially if you've been drinking. See, heavy drinking can deplete your body of potassium, which is one of the many factors in why you feel so awful after a night of partying. Bananas can replenish that lost potassium to help prevent nausea and other hangover symptoms. How does one make out with a mouthful of banana? Nelson's leaving with a girl whose name he doesn't know yet. All right, now they're not even eating bananas in this banana eating contest. Everyone should be disqualified. The girl takes Nelson back to her hotel room. I don't understand creepy elevator guy. They go into her room. She tells Nelson she's leaving tomorrow, so she wants tonight to be special. Nelson's thirsty, so she tells him to go to the vending machine and get some drinks. He gets some Cokes in the lobby. Ugh, crazy kids in this soft drinks. Nothing but grain alcohol for me. He gets in the elevator, but we've got a really big problem. He can't remember her room number. The staff gets suspicious, so they throw him out. Poor Nelson, he was so close. He goes back to the bar and sees his stepdad's goons. The next morning, Adam is walking home after what was probably the greatest night of his life. He sees Nelson sulking on the beach. Nelson's depressed and thinks he's gonna leave, but he changes his mind. Later that day, another contest? The guys are having lunch and Nelson sees the girl from last night. He meets up with her to tell her what happened, and she tells him she decided to stay another day so she could see him again. He lets her know about a party that night, and Eddie overhears. That night, hot dates playing the party. What's tonight's song about? The trade deficit? Healthcare reform? Oh, right. Joan must come to these shows shortly after teaching her jazzercise class. Susie shows up to meet Nelson. They split when they see Eddie and his stepfather's goons. Ish gets them out and delays the jerks. They get away, but Eddie can't go after them because the guy has sabotaged his car. Susie and Nelson go to the beach. Nelson has to pee, so he goes away for a minute. He finds a nice spot where he unknowingly pees on an alligator. 
Well, it is Florida. The gator is none too happy, so he steals his pants. He runs back to Susie and... <laughs> This could be the first time in recorded history where an alligator attack helped someone get laid. That morning, Eddie finds him and takes him to Ernest. I will not have you running around in public acting like a fool and dressing like a hermaphrodite. Wait, what? This line's delivered perfectly. Your mother is sick to death about this. Where is she? Out shopping. Since Eddie found Nelson, Ernest gives him enough money to shut down the motel. Nelson tries to escape, but they lock him up in the yacht. Adam has a feeling that something's wrong. Susie shows up to tell him what happened. Eddie goes to the motel with the building commissioner and has the place shut down. The guys then concoct a plan to save both Nelson and the motel. O.T. sneaks onto the yacht and rescues Nelson. For that, Nelson hits him with a fish. The gang then fights off the henchmen to escape. They all head back to the motel where they get into the wackiest brawl ever. I don't see how this is going to end with anything other than assault charges. They're celebrating, so I guess they won? Nelson's parents show up. Ernest demands them to be set free, but Nelson stands up to him. He gets the building inspector to admit that he was bribed. He manages to get Ernest to agree to leave the motel alone. Nelson's mom then tells Ernest she's divorcing him, and the police arrest him. The next day, spring breaks over, so they're packing up and going home. Only thing left to do is take the obligatory silly end credits photo. Oh yes, and the outro cast adventures montage. The movie was filmed entirely on location in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Director Sean S. Cunningham made a huge splash with Friday the 13th in 1980. Not wanting to just make horror, he wanted to try another genre altogether, a teen comedy. His vision for the film stemmed from his own spring break experiences when he went to Stanford University. He was trying to capture the absurdity and once-in-a-lifetime experience of college kids on spring break. The film was set to release on March 25th, 1983, perfectly timed during many schools' spring break. The music for the film was mostly composed by Harry Manfredini, the composer of the Friday the 13th movie, as well as many of Cunningham's other productions. The title track Spring Break was from the band Cheap Trick. Oddly, the biggest song, Caught Up in You by 38 Special, was not included on the soundtrack. Corrine Alphen, who played Joan, was the penthouse pet of the year in 1982. You may remember her from my video on Equalizer 2000 as the heroine Karen. On a sad note, Tammy Lynn Leppert, who played the female boxer, vanished a few months after the film was released. On July 6, 1983, she had an argument with a friend who left her in a parking lot in Cocoa Beach, Florida. She was never seen or heard from again. Reportedly, that's her body they used on the poster for the film. In 1983, the studio Columbia Pictures was owned by Coca-Cola. This may be why they snuck some Coke product placement into the film. I couldn't get a definitive word on Miller, though, but it is seen quite a lot throughout the film. I love Spring Break. While it was part of the teen sex comedy craze of the early 80s, it sets itself apart by being genuine instead of obnoxious. It's not too ridiculous or outside the realm of possibility. It's almost as if they took a greatest hits version of a bunch of Spring Break stories and condensed them into one film. Sure, there's a fair amount of nudity, but nowhere near the levels of some of the other similar films of the time. Spring Break reminds me of a simpler time, when friendships bonded over a weekend, Parties erupted in a moment's notice, and beer was always the answer to what should we do tonight. There's only one way we can get it going again. Oh, what's that? Drink! Believe it or not, it's kind of a heartwarming tale. Friends fight back against the old evil establishment while simultaneously making new friends, learning how to loosen up, and falling in love. If only for a few days. <laughs> I still don't know where my underpants are. Why, what happened to them? I think they ate them. <laughs> 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 <laughs>